Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. As you are likely aware, a protracted and complex conflict has been unfolding in the Amhara region of Ethiopia, with persistent clashes between Amhara Fano forces and the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, ENDF. This ongoing strife has been evolving at a rapid pace, and it is crucial to delve into the comprehensive details of the current situation, which I will elaborate on in this detailed communication. In the geographical context of Tsehai Mucha, Terefe, and Vegel Tenal, situated within southern Wello, a stark escalation of hostilities between the aforementioned factions has emerged as a significant cause for concern. These conflict-ridden areas have borne witness to an alarming intensification of fighting, with both Amhara Fano forces and ENDF deploying substantial military assets. Reports suggest that ENDF soldiers have been stationed in these regions with an array of heavy weaponry at their disposal. A distressing facet of this development is the conflicting claims of victory emanating from both sides, which further underscores the volatility of the situation in this particular theatre of the conflict. Expanding our gaze to the southern front, we find that the conflict is disseminating to an increasing number of areas. Initially, the eruption of hostilities was confined to locations along the A2 highway, but regrettably, it has now proliferated to numerous other areas within the region. The evolving situation on the southern front is characterized by its fluidity, with both Amhara Fano forces and the ENDF locked in combat across a multiplicity of locations. Furthermore, our sources have relayed reports detailing a significant development in the form of more than 14 ENDF convoys observed transporting troops from the Tigray region to Gonda within the Amhara region. This troop movement represents a consequential development in the unfolding narrative of the conflict. In recent weeks, Gonda, the second largest city in the Amhara region, has witnessed an escalation of hostilities, further underscoring the gravity of the situation. In another deeply disheartening incident, reports indicate that within the confines of Kerasefa and Debrasina, situated in northern Shiwa, members of the Amhara militia and Amhara riot police have been implicated in the loss of lives of several Amhara civilians, particularly young individuals. Tragically, this violence has claimed the lives of two brothers, highlighting the devastating impact of the conflict on innocent civilians who find themselves ensnared in the midst of this turmoil. Moreover, we have become privy to an alert issued by what seems to be a human rights or humanitarian organization referred to as AAAA. This alert has raised grave concerns regarding the potential for mass atrocities unfolding within urban centers, including Gonda and Bahia Dar. The report posits that since April 2023, regime forces have allegedly engaged in extrajudicial killings and summary executions within major Amhara cities, seemingly without consequence. The issuance of this alert has amplified apprehensions surrounding the looming possibility of further large-scale atrocities as the conflict inexorably encroaches upon or infiltrates major cities in the Amhara region of Ethiopia, most notably Gonda and Bahia Dar. Apart from this, according to the reports from Amhara media, in a dictatorship, a nation disappears. All that's left is a kingdom ruled by outsiders. Wolosoyinka I find it really confusing when I hear Abi Ahmed speak. I make a conscious effort to avoid it now. How did a man who seems so ignorant and nonsensical manage to deceive not just Ethiopians but the whole world? It seems like the world was eager for someone from that region to emerge as a leader. So when he appeared and said and did things that seemed positive at first but turned out to be the opposite, they quickly made him their leader. Now. They all admit their mistake, and some won't even shake his hands because they know he's responsible for terrible things. But they don't know how to deal with him, so they just issue weak statements of disapproval, 
which he ignores. Meanwhile, Ethiopians, especially Amhara Ethiopians, suffer every day because of Abiy Ahmed's ethnic army. This army used to be a respected national force, but they removed anyone who cared about the nation. The generals and other high-ranking officers from different ethnic backgrounds were replaced with people from Abiy Ahmed's ethnic group. It became an ethnic killing machine. This transformed army has been in the Amhara region for over five months, committing mass murders, looting, and stealing from poor Amhara farmers. They've even killed farm animals without compensating the farmers, and they've used heavy weapons, drones, and fighter planes on innocent civilians, including women and children. They've gone so far as to execute hospital patients, young Amhara, the elderly, and others in broad daylight. International organizations have verified and documented all these crimes. Considering all this, the world must acknowledge the terrible humanitarian crisis in Ethiopia under Abiy Ahmed's oppressive rule. If we don't take action soon, he'll continue these killings and genocide. The Lemkin Institute for the Prevention of Genocide in the U.S. has issued a red flag alert about the genocide of the Amhara people. This situation has been going on for five years, but now it's getting worse with heavy weapons, drones, and fighter jets. So, it's time for the international community, especially the Western world, the US, Europe, Australia, and the UN, to do more than issue statements. We need to impose an arms embargo and no-fly zones in the Amhara region to stop the violence. We also need to help the Amhara people defend themselves against this tyrannical regime. Abiy Ahmed has deployed the entire military to the Amhara region, which is unprecedented and likely a prelude to a massive massacre. The Fanos, the only ones protecting the Amhara people, rely on captured weapons from Abiy Ahmed's soldiers. They're brave, but they need more to counter an army with advanced weapons. Abiy Ahmed won't succeed against a determined population of 40 or 50 million, but it's a stain on the world to watch these atrocities and do nothing. The Amhara people will free themselves from this monster eventually, with or without help. Abiy Ahmed used an oppressive system and a fake constitution to discriminate against the Amhara people, making it worse than before. The world, especially those who support democracy and human rights, must take action. We must provide humanitarian aid to the Amhara region, which is under relentless destruction. The Amhara people have no choice but to keep fighting for survival, and they will triumph. But those who stand by and do nothing will be judged by history. The Fanos, defending the Amhara people, have shown discipline and heroism. In contrast, Abiy Ahmed's army has engaged in criminal acts, including looting. To deflect attention, the army portrays the Fanos as criminals, but it hasn't worked because the Amhara people support the Fanos. The Fanos have acted as a national force, upholding values like honor and decency. Despite the odds, they've achieved remarkable results. But this is just the beginning. They will continue and remove Abiy Ahmed from power. To weaken his regime further, they should consider expanding their struggle to other regions suffering under his rule. They might also train captured soldiers to resist the regime in their regions. These are ideas the Fanos are likely considering. We need to plan for a future without Abiy Ahmed, the cruel dictator. We must declare never again, to tyrants like him. In the meantime, we stand with the Amhara people and their Fanos in their fight for a democratic nation where everyone is treated equally, regardless of their ethnicity or religion.